Ciao, welcome to Celebrating Culture. In this episode, we're gonna feature some of the great Italian chefs of New Orleans. Italian restaurants are often passed down from generations, as my grandfather did. He opened his restaurant in the 1960s, and today it's run by the next generation, my aunt and uncle. Two Tonys is the story of Tony Montabano Sr., starting in Little Palermo decades ago on Bourbon Street in the French Quarter. Today, Tony Jr. runs Two Tonys in Lakeview. Tony's family recipe of New Orleans-style Sicilian marinara gravy is available in stores today. Chef Andrea has provided for decades the meeting spot and banquet hall for the Italian community in New Orleans. His phrases, Mamma Mia and My House is Your House are well known throughout the Italian community. Verino sausage is available throughout New Orleans. When you stop by Michael Verino's booth at a festival of farmer's market, you're gonna experience the Italian culture of honoring our parents. In his case, his father was a World War II pilot flying dozens of missions. Frank Davis was a well-loved TV personality. His approach to cooking, fishing, and storytelling has that Italian influence in it. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hi, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Culture. Awe News has interviewed hundreds of people and produced dozens of episodes for local broadcasting. Awesome people doing great things to inspire us all. If you'd like to watch a specific interview, please visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. Hi, welcome to Celebrating Culture. This month, we're talking about dining in New Orleans. What is Sicilian dining? What is Creole Sicilian? And we're here at Tony Montabano's place, Two Tonys, out at Lakefront Marina. Tony, welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, good to see you. You started out in the French Quarter, and then you moved out to New Orleans, Lakeview area. Tell us your story. My dad and I started Two Tonys 30 years ago, but he started much earlier than that, down in the French Quarter, uh, him and his brothers and sisters and, and aunts and uncles. Uh, they all um, grew up in the French Quarter. Like a lot of the, of the families down in the French Quarter, they you know, wanted better lives for themselves. My, my grandfather had a, uh, a grocery store. A lot of Italian families had either grocery stores or were in the restaurant or the food service industry. He was also a commercial fisherman. My dad and his brothers you know, didn't want that life, the commercial fisherman life. But that's something he brought over from Sicily. His grandfather, so my great-grandfather, was a commercial fisherman out of Palermo. So I think that's why New Orleans fit so well for them. They were going from a coastal fishing sure, community yes. to another coastal fishing community and it worked out well for them. The migration takes place. I mean, there were schools and all in the French Quarter, but we see the French Quarter today and it's tourist, it's, it's changed. My dad and his brothers and sisters, they went to St. Louis Cathedral School. It's a block behind St. Louis Cathedral and grew up down there. They didn't want such a hard life as their, as their dad had, my grandfather, um, with, in the commercial fishing industry so um, they started um, bars, restaurants, um, things like that, Eva's Spot, Montebano Seafood, the Blue Angel um, and then you kind of fast forward to when you know I came along my dad and I left there and opened up two Tonys over on Decatur Street and that was 30 years ago. Then we moved out to Bucktown there for about 18 years and now we're at this new location which is just a few blocks away. We're going on seven years now. It stays, it seems like a, a close-knit community, longtime clients. It does and, and really that's one of the things that keeps me in the industry. I really, really do legitimately feel blessed and good about people who from just a simple birthday or 50th wedding anniversary that they choose us. There's a lot of restaurants in New Orleans, yeah, a lot of real good restaurants. <laughs> this is more of they feel like they're just coming to a family member's house. Good food, friends, family, you know the owner, you know the wait staff. It just means a lot to people. A lot of regulars. 95%. Wow. So when you say the good food, you seem like you've made the local cuisine your niche. Soft shell crabs, you're known for. I'm a stickler about only getting local crabs, only doing it in season, you know, we'll never use a frozen crab. We try hard to get Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Bourne crabs. I think it makes all the difference. We just do different sauces and things and then you start getting into the Creole Italian side of it where, you know, we may do just a flair that it might have some Creole tomatoes mixed into the recipe or the sauce. Local seafood, maybe it's crawfish season at the same time. We're using Louisiana crawfish tails. Maybe maybe Tasso, fusing all the things that we have. We have so many good ingredients, it makes, makes my life easy. So the Creole tomato, that gets the name, and it gets mostly known in St. Bernard and Plaquemines. How did it get started? I think there's a few different stories out there, but it's uh, widely held that the alluvial soil down in Plaquemines and St. Bernard Parish is the key to it. I think LSU um, you know, created a Creole tomato that maybe was a little bit more resistant to diseases and things like that. Tell you what, it's something special when you get a vine-ripened tomato from St. Bernard. It's like wines, almost like when you go to Napa, you have right. a, a, this type of right. wine, it grows in this soil and that soil. Yeah, the most popular one 
in Italy is a San Marzano style tomato. It's a plum style tomato. So the San Marzano style, it's the soil it's grown in. It's the climate, the humidity, and the same thing here in, in South Louisiana. I'd actually like to put some Creoles up against some San Marzanos, <laughs> and some true San Marzanos, and see, see how it um, fares. Speaking of that, you have your own sauce. Right. And it says Sicilian marinara. We've been doing this recipe for about 30 years now, and it's a fusion of my mother's side of the family, my dad's side of the family. Um, one's a Sicilian, one is more of a northern Italy, uh, my mother's side. But these are recipes that they have been doing for years, and I kind of took them as my own. Every chef wants to do their own twist on it. And the marinara is actually translates into sailor style in Italian. You know, something that would, uh, would be a good hearty meal when sailors came back in is where I think the name originated from. Then also pastas. We got Progresso Soup, we got Luxury Pasta. Worldwide names, you know, they, they're, it's, it's amazing that they came out of just little small stores in the French Quarter. This fresh produce that right. was just plentiful. We're pretty lucky. Fresh produce, fresh seafood all around us. There's a reason that New Orleans is well known around the world as, you know, such a foodie spot. We got some great ingredients that other people just don't have. Any family recipe that was always your favorite from grandma yeah. or grandpa? A bunch of them. And a lot of the food that I do today spins off of those great recipes. And some of them are those exact recipes. Beef dobe is not a very well-known dish, but Sicilian Italians in New Orleans, if you put that on the menu, they absolutely know what you're talking about. I read you actually send an email out to some of your followers. When I do it, I call out and it's it's a sellout. A muffalata sandwich, I, I think that goes back to, was called the Romano previously? Or? Roma sandwich, a guy, and I would love to say he he was my great uncle or something like that, but he wasn't. His name was Montabano. Um, I think it was Biglio, Biglio Montabano. And he had a grocery store in the French Quarter like a lot of Sicilian Italians did. So a lot of the old timers, you know, my dad and, and some of his uncles and cousins, they all talk about this Roma sandwich that I believe is on Dauphine Street. And it was, you know, you put the, the bread on the scale and you'd tell them, you know, this much mortadella, this much Genoa, that much provolone. But then the lanyap was he had an olive mixture, an olive the like olive tapenade, mixture. you would call it these days, but olive salad. And he would put that on and that was like the icing on a cake. And then, you, you know, he'd wrap it up, but it would feed the family. It was a well-known sandwich. And I think a lot of people agree that that kind of morphed into the muffalata that we, we see today. And, and it is the olive salad on the that, muffalata that's what makes, that makes it special. It, it does. It's, it's know, unbelievable. It's, it's, a, it's a cold cut, a really good cold cut sandwich otherwise. <laughs> So if somebody wants to follow you and, and know when to come, you know, get on your list, how do they, how do they find you guys? TwoTonys.com okay. and, uh, and you can email me there or, uh, you know, we, we, we love getting uh, requests for different things and, or if somebody has a question about a party or, um, you know, an event coming up. Tony, I want to thank you for being on the show. All right. And stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Celebrating Culture. Our news spent five years touring Louisiana. We've interviewed countless numbers of people. The people that make it happen, that put on Mardi Gras, the chefs, the artists, the backbone of Louisiana. We've taken those interviews and made a show called Celebrating Culture. But we've also taken those interviews and put them in a tour app, New Orleans Insider Tours. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll have access to putting together the best game plan to experience in Louisiana. You can start with Little Palermo, which is 50 points of interest on the Italian community, and then go to Statue Stories and Spirits, over 150 stops in the French Quarter and CBD. Where to dine in New Orleans, what rooftop bars give you the best view, how to see the Gulf of Mexico from the coastal towns, driving up to the Bonnie and Clyde Museum near Shreveport, or up to Vicksburg. New Orleans and Louisiana are must see for everyone, and there's so much to see. So we hope you enjoy it, and as we say here, let the good times roll. Welcome to Celebrating Culture. We're here in New Orleans with Chef Andre, and we're in Jefferson Parish because a lot of Sicilians and a lot of Italians have left New Orleans and come out to Jefferson Parish. But I think one of the best places is Andre's. You have made this restaurant feel like it's Italy. W welcome to the show, Chef. Thank you, glad to be with you, glad to be in the show, and I'm proud to be an Italian immigrant. I was born and raised in the Yala Capri, and I've been around the world, Switzerland, Germany, France, England, Bermuda, Mexico, Argentina. And my ultimate goal was to come to North America. 
I did not know that the American people love Italian food so great, so wonderful, so just unbelievable. They love oh, good the Italian best. food. But I grew up on a farm in Italy. So make our own olive oil, make our own wine, and I, my mom had taught me how to do milk the cow in the morning and everything else. When I came to New Orleans in Louisiana here, I found all this wonderful, like, you know, we have Creole tomato. Yes. My God, what a wonderful. Well, what's great is your wine comes from Italy. You make your pasta fresh. I make fresh pasta every day with semolina, high durum flour. You know, it's also made in Italy. And uh, I love Italian heritage. I'm very proud to be here in Louisiana to represent Italy. You went into the French Quarter and then you came out to Metairie. And there's so many Italians and Sicilians in the neighborhood. So your restaurant is quite large. I mean, you have a great bar, you have piano, you have a banquet hall. You really offer everything for the Sicilian community that's Absolutely. outside of New Orleans. I'm a very lucky man. I like to work hard, most of all Italian. Yes. They like to work hard, they love home, they love the family, they love the children. What a lucky man I've been. I met so many wonderful Italian people here, great, great people, Italian, French, German. As you know, we're melting pot here in Louisiana. But I always they told me, why don't you open a good Italian restaurant? So we bought Landy Bill in 1984, big line outside when we opened the restaurant. And my God, I say, God bless America because all my dream comes through here. A lot of people say, why did you go to Jefferson Parish to open a restaurant like it should be in French Quarter, it should be downtown? And I said, well, I want to strictly deal with local people. And of course, tourists right. welcome. I welcome everybody. The Italian community has many events here, and you've been very gracious. The uh, Italian Piazza comes here frequently for oh, fundraisers. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. was their earthquake fundraiser. Frank Maselli, good, yes. good, good friend of us, Frank Maselli, and uh, Joe Maselli, as you know. People appreciate it here, and I love to come to Andrea because they feel at home. My home is your home. We've been here almost 34 years now. San Lucia Society has been coming here for years and years. Chela Futana Organization has yes. been coming for years. So we have a lot of wonderful organizations that they know they can have the best cuisine, reasonable price. Creole Italian. So let's talk about, you have the crab meat ravioli. Yeah, I love fresh seafood. And as you know, in Louisiana here, we have some of the finest crawfish. But I make it this wonderful crawfish ravioli. Outstanding. And I do a great oyster and artichoke villa d'este, which is overly really homemade fresh pasta. The other one I did, it, since we have in Louisiana, we have a lot of great eggplant. Yes, I combined eggplant, eggplant, eggplant and I made a crab cake with the crab meat. Oh my God, that's oh, our guest favorite, wow, favorite dish. Yeah, sure. Oh, I said, oh, Andre, <laughs> the best crab cake we have had ever in the city and around in the world. When I discover alligator tail, I said, oh my God, that is unbelievable. <laughs> so I did this beautiful alligator, alligator masala. masala. <laughs> so tonight, we're going to have alligator masala. Yes. It's a very tender, it's delicious. Mamma mia. It's so good. So I like to create. I've been cooking for 60 years. As it was in the 1870s that the Italians first came here. So you're allowing me to go back in time <laughs> and talk to someone who's come over from Italy That's with it. that same enthusiasm and the passion. And I actually, to be honest with you, true story, I came in New only for two years. That was 1977. 2018, I'm still here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so, so you just celebrated a milestone, 40 years, last year. <laughs> Absolutely. And now you're working on 50, so we hope you'll have a, we'll have a 50-year anniversary. Very fortunate. But you've been uh, at the Italian Piazza, some of the events I've seen you. We have a great, great feast every year with the Festa d'Italia. And it's a wonderful one. They do a good job there. That is like a large backyard, it seems. When you go there, it's very intimate, but yet it's a festival, and yet Lena Prima sings there. Oh my God, yeah, the cannolis okay. are great. Oh, you're you're there. It's, it is the best. Salute. Ciao. Salute. Grazie. This is nice. This is real. <laughs> it's a mamma mia. This is, this is awesome. Oh, yeah. Congrats. A, thank you. We, I guess, loves it. Celebrating Cultures organized the content from our show into an app called New Orleans Insider Tours. Download the app to see views of the New Orleans skyline from various rooftop bars around the city. Go up to Rosie's on the Roof. It gives you a great perspective of the city. New Orleans has a tremendous amount to offer, but leaving the city and exploring Louisiana is a must. If you'd like to enjoy the coast of Louisiana, go down to Delacroix.
If you'd like to know the history of the river, go up to the Great River Road Museum in Darrow. Poverty Point is located between Monroe and Tallulah, Louisiana, and is one of 23 World Heritage Sites in America. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're at the Bucktown Marina with Michael Verino. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Charles, <laughs> good to see you, my man. So, Michael, we're cousins going way back. Oh, yeah. What I remember growing up is Grandma's Pizza and the sausage. You still have your dad's recipe for sausage. Same recipe from 1963, Charles. Uh, it's a 56-year-old family recipe. You are around New Orleans in a lot of places with the sausage. I am. I do uh, several farmers markets around the city. Keeps me busy and out of trouble. What do you think makes Italian sausage so special? You know, I believe it begins with the base, the meat. First of all, I use the very lean, what's called the Boston butt. What really gives it the unique flavor is what's known as fenurki or fennel seeds. People who know fenurki it has a licorice flavor, and that's what permeates throughout the meat and gives it the uh, what's known as Italian sausage, yeah. I know we used to have it for Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah. Are there any special days that Italian sausage is more popular? Thanksgiving and Christmas are still the, the main uh, holidays that you find uh, people cooking up the Italian sausage. But it's good any time. Any time you cook spaghetti, pasta sugar, you got to throw in some Italian sausage, yeah. You grew up in Monroe. Yes. And Monroe had a big Italian community. Oh, gosh. As a matter of fact, where we lived, we called it Little Italy. I mean, there were just Italians all around the neighborhood. Even our local priest father, Sam Polizzi, who was of Sicilian uh, heritage, he was the gentleman who got with my dad and started teaching my dad basically how to make the sausage. My father, who owned a meat market and a grocery store, was the gentleman who actually perfected the recipe. Do you think that the meal, the Italian meal, is been critical or contributed to the Italian family? Part of our history. Look back when the Sicilians migrated into the States. They were basically, all of them were in some sort of food business, agriculture, grocery business, or whatever. Just about any Italian family is in one way or another, you can't beat the Italian food, right? You can't. That, that's how I think America fell in love with Italians. Absolutely. I think we overcame a lot by making by right. side. These guys got something that going. and a little vino. <laughs> <laughs> What do you have in your types of sausage? I have three flavors of Italian. I have what I call the sweet or the mild Italian, a hot Italian, and my garlic flavored Italian. And I also sell, in addition to Italian, I sell green onion sausage. I sell a breakfast sausage, which has sage and maple syrup in it. I also sell a German sausage. Don't tell my dad. It'd be rolling over in his grave. Now, understand also that we talk about Italian family. Your dad was a war hero. He was. So, he, so when you were at your booth, you actually let people know a little bit about your own family. I'm very proud of my family, heritage, faith, family, and friends. My father was a fighter pilot in World War II. He flew what's called the Jug, or the P-47 Thunderbolt. He flew 113 missions and never got a scratch. A very lucky man. We used to play dominoes in his later years, and he told me, he said, Michael, he said, my only regret is I never received a Purple Heart. And I told him, I said, well, Dad, we probably wouldn't be sitting here talking right now if you had gotten shot while you were flying, you know, so. That's an interesting regret <laughs> to have. And I have a pictures of my Sicilian grandparents when they came into New Orleans. They had a little fruit stand in the French market. Well, Mike, I also want to let you know, I used your sausage for an appetizer for alligator marsala. So I'm now working on my own dish Wonderful. where we've replaced chicken with alligator because we're in Louisiana. And alligators throughout the whole state. So I looked up some recipes, and I think it came out really tasty. Well, you need to set up a booth right next to mine <laughs> then, right? I think it would, because people could have your sausage, and then they can have our alligator. Cajun and Italians. <laughs> I love to try a little sample, huh? I'm going to bring some to you next time All I see right, you. All right, Paisan. If anybody wants to catch up with you, where do they go? The best thing to do is go to my website, which is verinositaliansausage.com. Now, I want to try your breakfast. I don't normally recommend grilling my breakfast sausage, but that's the only way I can cook it at the market. So, and this is a recipe that I came up with that has sage and a little hint of maple syrup in it. Taste of maple is really tasty. Yeah. It's uh, very good. My morning regimen is my breakfast sausage with my eggs and a cup of coffee. That's how I start That's my day. That's the way day. my dad did. I'm, can I have seconds? <laughs> and you can have <laughs> thirds and fourths. I'm going to have a lot more <laughs> seconds, thirds and fourths. Michael, I want to thank you for being on the show. Charles, thank you, and, and I can't wait to try your, uh, your recipe. Great. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. 
Celebrating Culture is brought to you by Awe News. Awe News also produces New Orleans Insider Tours, which are 10 self-guided tours of New Orleans and Louisiana. Now, if you want to enjoy oysters raised a new way off bottom, stop by Dickie Brennan's Bourbon House. If you want to enjoy charbroiled oysters, stop by Drago's. Thanksgiving time, y'all time to make some serious groceries. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that'll keep, that'll keep, that'll hold cornmeal for sure. You know, instead of bouncing around out on the open gulf today, we're back in the dead-end canals because we're getting closer and closer to that season, fishing speckled trout. Would you look at this, y'all? I'm catching me a mess of fish, but that's because I know all the right spots. And you can, too, with my Frank Davis fishing map. And in New Orleans, you got to have oysters for the oyster dressing. Lots of oysters. I mean, I mean, lots of oysters. Lots and lots of oysters. Folks, yesterday we made groceries. Now today we gotta process all the groceries so that we can have something to cook with. The celery, the bell pepper, the onion, the garlic, the parsley, and of course, don't throw away the giblets. You gotta have the giblets if you're gonna make cornbread dressing. You need the heart, the liver, the gizzard, the neck, and the piece that went over the fence last. And don't be afraid to use the butter. Weight Watchers won't care, okay? They're not eating your turkey anyway. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here today at WWL Studios with Eric Paulson. Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you, Charles. So, Eric, Frank Davis, an icon in New Orleans for many decades, and you worked with him. Where did he get started? Frank was quite a character. And probably the strangest of them all, Kawan. Now, the rest of the world calls the Kawan turtle. Here we call it Kawan, Kawan. But I'll bet you that half the city has no idea what a Kawan is. He was with the Wildlife and Fisheries Department, and they started doing fishing game reports for WWL Radio. And then I first met Frank in the early 80s. Most of us know that Frank Davis will fish anywhere as long as there's a little bit of water around. So when word leaked out that there were hundreds of fish and thousands of gallons of water here at the Aquarium of the Americas, Frank Davis showed up. on TV, it's just a natural period. Frank was brilliant. I mean, he really was smart. He did a lot. Well, he, he produced he, a lot. He was almost kind of like a Renaissance man in some ways because he could write, he could produce, he could star in, he could play music, he could sing songs, he could cook. I mean, it was just great. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. They actually named a bridge after him. I was there for the <laughs> ceremony. Now, wh now, what was that like? Because that was, was that where he used to fish all the time when he would do his shows? That was one of the places. He'd, he'd fish, uh, you know, all over the area. But that was one of his favorite spots in Lake Pontchartrain. And the city got behind that. That was a nice dedication. It was pretty big. It was a state representative from Slidell who kind of backed that one and got it got it going. WWL had a good team there of people. Uh, you said a few words. I said a few words. Sally said a few words. It was like old home week for us. And it was just... We're just so glad to be part of it. And one thing I loved is when Mary Claire cut the ribbon, she actually, it looked like she looked up to Frank. Uh, I think she was. Now on the set, were they always so close? They were kind of like the mom and pop on the morning show every Tuesday. They were in the kitchen every Tuesday morning. And Mary Claire, and, and she was a natural. She was like, you know, his, his right arm. 
the uh, recipes, four cookbooks. What else was he doing with New Orleans? He kind of like showcased New Orleans. The station took a big chance on him because when they decided they were going to bring Frank on television, I mean, here's a guy who had really no training in TV. They kind of thought, well, this might be a long shot, but but he's kind of a, a naturally New Orleans kind of guy. They coined the phrase naturally New Orleans, and, and it just... It became a thing, and then Frank just fell right into it. And then he knew stuff. I mean, he knew the city very well. Frank, I always said Frank was kind of like those buggy drivers in the French Quarter. I'm not sure the history is totally accurate, <laughs> but it's very entertaining. <laughs> I just say, Frank, is that actually a fact you're saying, or is that something you think? And he goes, meh. <laughs> and now you've kept up the Naturally Nolans piece in W. Bell that still exists. Yeah, uh, Channel 4 owns the franchise on that. The pieces he did with Benny Grunch and the Bunch yes. on the 12 Yats of Christmas. And now for something very naturally Nolans this Christmas. On the first day of Christmas my mama gave to me a crawfish they caught in Araby. And Santa's reindeer used to live right here. You know, I'll bet you your whole life you thought that Santa and his reindeer always lived at the North Pole, right? Siding on the side, washing in the rear. Well, I got it on real good authority that Santa and his reindeer used to live right here. Santa and his reindeer used to live right here. Here's a Christmas story that you probably didn't know. Like most Christmas stories happened long time ago. In a renovated double near Broad and St. Bernard lived a fat little hippie with some livestock in his yard. There was elves in and out, a refrigerated van. People thought it was a daycare or a snowball stand. Been a bunch of tenants, been a bunch of years, but Santa and his reindeer used to live right here. These look like Hollywood productions. I mean, they're really well done. And Frank was the producer on those. Oh, he did really have a big talent. And, yeah. And you guys honored him with the kitchen. Yep, it's the Frank Davis kitchen in there. The kitchen always just seemed like it was Frank's place. He, he is naturally New Orleans, and that is part of our culture. Eric, thanks. Charles, Say it great, a few great words. seeing you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. Celebrating Cultures organized the content from our show into an app called New Orleans Insider Tours. Download the app to see views of the New Orleans skyline from various rooftop bars around the city. Go up to Rosie's on the Roof. It gives you a great perspective of the city. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Culture, and I know you'll enjoy experiencing all the great Italian and Sicilian restaurants throughout Louisiana and the South. Personally, I've been to almost all of them, and I can tell you it is a blast. So get in the car, take a drive, go find a great Italian restaurant, and have a good time. For more information, visit our website, a-I-F-E-D-S-E dot -E org. Hey, y'all. What holiday are we going to celebrate tomorrow night? Halloween! Halloween. And who's going trick-or-treating? Me! Who wants to carve a pumpkin? Me! Do you want a happy pumpkin? Yeah! Or do you want a scary yeah! pumpkin?